Welcome back to the Oscar Project Podcast, the show where I discuss Oscar-nominated films year by year. I am your host, Jonathan Etreberg, and today I'm bringing you an interview with another winner from the Student Academy Awards last fall. In this conversation, I speak with documentary filmmaker Jean Shapiro about her film, Till We Find Them. Before I jump into the interview, please subscribe to the show in your podcast player so you can get all the newest episodes as soon as they are released. If you like the interview and want to hear more, please consider leaving a rating and review in Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Jean Shapiro is the director of the short documentary, Till We Find Them, and recipient of the Bronze Medal for Documentaries at the 2023 Student Academy Awards. She graduated from the Columbia University School of Journalism and is currently pursuing a master's in film. She joins me on the show to talk about her film and her experience at the Student Academy Awards ceremony. Jean, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. So first off, congratulations on receiving the Student Academy Award. I know you got to spend some time in Los Angeles back in October around that time. What was the best part of that experience for you? Um, It was a super fun experience. I think the most fun was getting to hang out with the other winners. Um, Everyone Mm -hmm. was from different parts of the world. And it was just so fun to, to to meet them and to hang out with them. And one day they took us to Universal Studios to to the theme park. And that was super fun because we just got to bond over the rides and then just, yeah, having fun there. That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, Now, what was it that first got you interested in documentary filmmaking as opposed to any other sort of of films? Um, What got me started in documentary filmmaking is that in the summer of 2020, when the pandemic hit and... um, everything started shutting down. I, I went um, back home to Mexico. I was studying at the moment um, in Philadelphia, but I went back home and the internship mm-hmm. that I had for the summer got canceled. So um, I started looking for stuff to do and I found a documentary production company in Mexico called Gravedad Cero Films that was um, starting production for a docuseries about addictions. And um, I I emailed the producer and he said that he had an opening for a production assistant. And I I joined and I fell in love with documentaries. That's fantastic. I I like that uh, that background there. Now, speaking on the film specifically, uh, the film looks at various families of people who've gone missing in Mexico. Um, Now, where did you first hear about these families and how did you get connected with the specific families that you feature in the documentary? So the missing people crisis in Mexico, it's something that I grew up knowing about, but it's something that everybody knows about and no one really talks about because it's, it's very dangerous and it can get you in trouble or your family in trouble. That's what we think that if we talk about it, it can get us in trouble. So it's kind of like something that's kind of shocked or people don't really actively do something about. Um, And in March of 2022, I went to an event for Women's Day at the New York City Public Library. And in the event, I met the protagonist of a film, Araceli Salcedo. And she she flew all the way from Veracruz, Mexico, to tell her story here. And as soon as she started speaking, I was so moved by her vulnerability and her strength and her courage. So when she finished um, talking, I went up to her and I told her that I, I promised I would do anything, like everything in my power to help her tell her story. And the best way that I know how to help is by by communicating it through film. Um, so that's how I um, I met her. That's fantastic. And you focus in the film on on these families who have the dolls of their missing loved ones. Um, and I, I like that they say having the dolls is, is like having a bit of their lost relatives with them, even if they can't actually have the physical people. What was it about this specifically it made you decide to want to turn your attention to those dolls as part of the focus of the film? Um, so I, as a filmmaker, I like working a lot with what I call visual metaphors. And when Araceli told me about the dolls, I knew that I could use them in the film as a visual metaphor to help people understand what this absence of their missing loved one means in a visual way, mm-hmm. because it's very hard to depict something that's missing. And sure. as a doll standing in for, for their missing loved ones, it's easier for audiences to grasp what it means for them. Um, so that's that's why I wanted to use them. That's interesting. Very interesting. 
And you highlight at the end of the film, uh, and obviously you mentioned earlier that you've known about it for, for a long time, there's thousands of people missing in Mexico, and I'm sure it's not unique to Mexico. I'm sure it happens around the world. What do you hope might happen as a result of people seeing the film and becoming more aware of this problem, not just in Mexico or in the U.S., but around the world, hopefully? Um, so there's a couple of things I, I hope to achieve with the film, but the first one is that I hope that by making this film, I gave an opportunity to Araceli and the other families that appear in the film to feel like they've been, that they are being hurt by someone, that someone is um, an ally to them, that someone is trying to fight with them, fight their fight with them and, and be an ally. But um, something that I also want to, to achieve with the film is that I want to show that despite everything that they've been through, what um, is... It's, it's hard for me to articulate because there's so much encapsulated into this film. It's something that is bigger than me, bigger than that collective, bigger sure. than Mexico. It's a problem worldwide. But something that really struck me is the unconditional love that this mother is mostly mothers have for their missing children and what they're willing to do driven by their unconditional love. And I think that's something really inspiring for anyone to see in the film that despite all their pain, all their suffering, what drives them is love. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I noticed in the film, there's several images where the people were out in the, you know, searching for the bodies and things like that. And there were what appeared to be soldiers or police of some sort along with them. You mentioned earlier how it's, you know, people think that it's dangerous to even talk about this uh, situation. What other, uh, what struggles did you face in making the film? What dangers did you face? Anything like that um, in the process of putting the film together? Um, there were many struggles. Um, some that I can talk about right now is um, climbing up the mountain with with the gear. Um, sure. We were a three person crew. It was me, the DP, and the sound recordist, and I was also the AC because we were <laughs> such a small crew. Right. And I'd never shot anything in in those conditions. It was extremely hot, extremely humid. It's an extremely steep mountain that we climbed up. Um, and there's also animals in the mountain, insects. You can encounter snakes. The families have been bitten by snakes when they go up by oh, wow. poisonous insects. They've fallen, um, gotten injured. So that's that's a physical physical barrier that they have to overcome each time. And there's also, for me personally, the emotional and psychological um, aspect of this. It's one thing hearing about it, and it's one thing having conversations with them on Zoom. And it's another thing being right. there in the moment with them and, and seeing them dig and, and fight. And when they find the body, kind of this ambivalence between not wanting to find their loved one, but in, in another way if, if they do find their loved one they can have peace of mind so it's it's sure. yeah it's, it's just extremely hard um and also just being invited into their homes and seeing photos or objects of their missing loved ones there were a lot of emotional um challenges throughout the shoot i'm sure i'm sure yeah it's, it's a difficult subject that's for sure so yeah definitely hard in that way too um, so is there anything else uh, you want us to know about the film uh, before I move on to some other questions not related to the film? Um, I think just that it was crafted from love. Um, and and I, despite, like, as I said before, despite all the pain and all the suffering, what I wanted to show and what I wanted to highlight is, is these fam like the unconditional love that these families have. And I think it's something that the world needs and that we can um, learn from them. Couldn't agree with that more. Uh, definitely need as much love in this world as we can. <laughs> um, yes. Now, this might be the hardest question I've asked. Um, you've probably watched a lot of films over the years, but if you could only pick your top three, what would you say they would be? Um, as you said, this is a very hard question, but did send me the questions in advance, so I did plan an answer. Um, <laughs> and I think my top three, and they're not in order. Like, they're like, I would rank them like equally. 
but it has to be Pan's Labyrinth, sure. E.T., okay, and Edward Scissorhands um, for fiction. And then I have Very top nice. three for um, documentaries. Um, okay, so go for it. So I really <laughs> like um, The Act of Killing, uh, Four Daughters, okay. and Dick Johnson is Dead. Um, I really like documentaries that use reenactment. Um, yeah. Okay. Very good. Definitely uh, include those in the show notes. Now, if you could invite any three movie characters to your next dinner party, who would they be and why? It's a little bit more this, of a Yeah, question. this is a great question. <laughs> um, I think I would love to have a dinner party with Bellatrix from Harry Potter and then Beetlejuice. Okay. And um, I don't know how to pronounce this in English. Is it is it Tyrion Lannister or Tyron Lannister from Game of Thrones? Oh, um, okay. How do yep, you pronounce yeah. it? That would certainly be in. I I honestly don't know. I uh, either okay, one I think is Tyrion, correct. So it would be Tyrion Lannister, Bellatrix, and Beetlejuice, and myself. I I like that. That's a that's a very interesting uh, interesting dinner party for sure. I'd like yeah. to be invited to that we one. Probably have like. <laughs> Fun or something. Right. Yeah. There would certainly be some uh, some interesting dishes served at that. <laughs> yes. Um, so oftentimes, I, most of the time, I'm interviewing authors on my podcast here. So are there any books you've read recently that you could recommend? They don't have to be about film and could be fiction or nonfiction. Um, I just started um, reading this book. In Spanish, the title is called El Poeta Chileno. Um, and it's by... The author is Alejandro Zambra, um, and he's uh, from Chile. And I just started okay. reading it, but right now what I think it's about, because I don't like reading synopsis too much, I just like to start reading them, about the relationship between um, a father and <laughs> Dive son right in. and yeah. um, poetry. Fantastic. Definitely put a link to that as well, um, see if people can pick it up. Is, is it available in English too, or is it just in Spanish, or don't you know? I think it's available in English. It's a pretty well-known book. Okay. It's new to me, but I think it's a pretty well-known book. Gotcha. But, um, this, it's one of my new, re new Year's resolutions to read more books. <laughs> I'm a slow reader. That's all right. As long as you keep, keep plugging away, that's the important part. <laughs> um, and lastly, before we wrap up, I know you said you're still in school, um, but what else are you working on either in school for projects there or uh, even a, a personal project? And also, where can people follow you on social media so they can get updates on your, your upcoming work? Um, yeah, thank you for that. So I'm finishing, um, I'm right now in the post-production for a fiction short that I um, directed, wrote and produced over the summer. Um, so I'm pretty excited okay. to be wrapping that. Uh, it's magical realism and kind of horror, um, yeah, okay. bordering on horror. So that's exciting for me. I've never done anything like that. And I'm in the process of developing and um, in pre-production for a couple of short documentaries. And I'm also producing two short films and writing um, what I hope is going to be my first feature. So, Excellent. So you're keeping yourself pretty busy then. Yeah. A little, <laughs> All that on top of school. Yeah. Um, and, and it's also part of school. So it's like, it's great when like your studies and, and your job is also your passion. Um, sure. So I'm yeah. pretty lucky in, in that respect. And people can just follow me on Instagram um, at gene.chap. Um, yeah. Excellent. We'll put uh, put a link to that Instagram on the, the show notes as well so people can check you out. And uh, thank you so much for the time today, Gina. Really enjoyed speaking with you about the film and about your experience at the Student Academy Awards. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for the time. Thank you again to my guest today, Jean Shapiro. Her short documentary, Till We Find Them, received the bronze medal for documentaries at the 2023 Student Academy Awards last October. The Oscar Project Podcast is written and produced by me, Jonathan Etroberg, with editing assistance from Joshua Etroberg. I have a number of interviews lined up with current Oscar nominees this month, so be sure to subscribe so you get notified of all the new episodes. Until next time, I hope to see you at the movies.